Hello and welcome to a new series on How Do I Get There? Finally, we're looking at bikes. Now, this is a Pinnacle Sentinel 2.0. I bought it from a chap yesterday. I saw it on Facebook Marketplace for £170 and I asked him, I'm a bit short on cash, could we come down to £120? And to my surprise, he said yes. It turns out that the man in question is not very well and he's selling it and his Mazda, in fact, because he can't go to work and he needs some way of making money to pay for his rent. And I really felt quite bad once I learned that fact that I negotiated for less. And when I arrived, he really wasn't in the best of moods. So when I left, he said, take good care of it. And I said, I will. So that's what I'm going to do. Now, this guy's poured his heart and soul into this bike. You can tell with the quality of the, the additions and the adjustments he's made to it, as well as the overall condition. So, I thought, in that spirit, and because I've wanted to work on a bike myself for a couple of years now, I thought I'd have my own hack at it. So, first thing I noticed when I picked up the bike was the saddle was very high. In fact, it's a large frame. It even says so here on the seat tube. Now, most bicycles, when you're buying a new one, particularly if you're buying online, you've really got to be careful that you're buying the right size for your, for your size. I'm 5'10 to 5'11, and this bike works between 5 foot 10 and 6 foot 1 so it's it's okay to be honest it'd be better suited for me for my dad more than for myself but that's not why I bought it I bought it because well it's blue has these tremendous orange handlebars that you saw just a moment ago it does have very thin tires and that's something I will address in another video but for the moment we're just going to look at the saddle now it's a very very thin thing in fact if I just show you It's not the comfiest. I mean, that's not really the point, is it? It's a, it's a racer. It's designed to be lightweight and, and nimble. And you're not really going to be here for comfort. You're here for speed. However, it is my work commute, so it has got to have some comfort to it. So, a couple of months ago, a friend of mine gave me a saddle from one of his old bikes. This one. A Schwinn, which is a very interesting name. Now, as you can see... They're quite different. Of course, it could turn out that I actually prefer the one it came with to the one I'm going to put on. But we won't know until we find out, will we? Now, to take off a saddle or even just adjust a saddle post, it's really quite simple. Let me show you. If you've got a set of these at home, Allen keys, don't ask me why they're called Allen, they just are, with these uh, hexagonal designs to them, you've just got to find the right one to, uh, to slot into this hole here on the rim, turn it anti-clockwise, lefty loosey righty tighty as they say, to unscrew like so. See, it's already moving on its own because of how loose I've made it. Now this is a big old thing, this is really quite long, it comes from the same brand as the bike. So what I want to do first is just slot that in to a comfortable height and then work on taking the saddle out. Now, I've just made a mistake. I put it back on when I need to take it off. Chairmanship really isn't my forte sometimes, especially not, not on a hot March day like today. Right. To take it off, we're going to have to unscrew, unscrew this using a slightly larger Allen key. This one might do. Ugh. Really fiddly to take these out sometimes. Now, will that fit in? Yes, it will. Good. This is all pretty easy bicycle maintenance, you know. My dad, he taught me a fair few things, like he taught me how to use an Allen key. Although that was for a, that was for a, that was for a bed, not for a, for a bicycle. Oh, this is really quite tough. Come on. Ah, I may have picked the wrong size. What does that say there? 10. And this is a... I can't tell. We'll find something slightly bigger. Uh, that looks slightly bigger. Maybe this will do. Oh, yes. That's the right size. Oh. 
Now these are done tightly to stop your saddle coming out naturally. And this one's done very tightly. I may have to get back to you. After a great amount of difficulty, I finally managed to get it off. Now there's obviously more than one way you can hold an Allen key. You can hold it with the short end in the, in the hole or the long ends. Depends what you're doing and indeed how accessible it is. There we go, so it's coming off. The clamp's released. I might be able to just slide it off now. No, I'll have to take the whole thing off. There we are. And it's free. So, very simple. Take this part of the clamp off. Shut the old one away. Put the new one on. Very simple. Now, that was put on... You see these long straight bits? Now, that was halfway on there. Might have to adjust that. So, I'll put it far forward, because I need to be able to reach the handlebar, so I'll put it as far forward as I can. Put this back in position and begin tightening it up again. Now, one piece of advice I would give you is pick a good day to be doing bicycle maintenance, particularly if you have to do it outside. My garage is full of bicycles, a couple of which need to go. In fact, half of them need to go. So there's very little space in my garage to do bicycle maintenance, so I tend to do it on hot days like this. In fact, when I finished school, and I had that long summer holiday, you know, between year 11 and the first year of college, great big summer holiday, spent most of it outside, and a great deal of it on my bike. And the reason for that was it didn't have a rack on it, as I infamously use a pannier, rack, uh, pannier bag on a pannier rack, uh, which one of which I will eventually add to this bicycle. Got a good afternoon on that in the hot sun. Something that, well, if you like the sun like I do and don't burn very easily like I do, it can be all right. So we'll get the uh, smaller Allen key out that we used. Okay, now this is the most important part of bicycles getting them comfortable. Because if they're not comfortable to ride for five minutes, then they won't be comfortable for an hour's ride from here to Portsmouth. And that's what I'll end up doing on this. That's the whole reason I bought it. Currently I work in Hilsey on a Saturday morning, which is about half an hour from here. And I have about 45 minutes to get there. So a leeway of about 15 minutes. But that 15 minutes is often used getting changed out of my sports kit and into my work uniform. So I have very little time to spare. So I need something light and fast to get me there. And that's where this comes in. But will the saddle hold out? So, I've been out for two or three test rides and managed to find the right height and indeed the right, I suppose, length on, uh, on the bracket here and on the seat post here. And it's an absolute treat. I have to say, going from basically no panning at all to a fair bit has decreased the amount of rattling and the general sort of vibration and increase the comfort of the ride immensely. I feel much happier on this thing now than I did yesterday when I rode it off from the man's house for more than one reason as I've said before. I've even managed to fit a bell from my mountain bike which is the last bike that's going to need a bell although if you do use a mountain bike for your commutes going round and round town or into the woods because I know a lot of you do especially people my age Put a bell on it. You'll thank me later. So a quick recap of what we've covered today. We've learnt what an Allen key is. We've learnt how to use it to unscrew your saddle. We've also learnt how to use it to take your saddle off your seat post. And we've also learnt, although you haven't seen, the differences between no padding on a saddle to quite a bit, as well as the importance of saddle height. That seat post can make all the difference, you know. My dad has been hunting and hunting. If we take a look at his bicycle, which I've got over here, it's a road one like mine. It's a, it's, it's a giant Wiles 
or a wild something else. I'm not really sure. It's actually smaller than mine, ironically. My dad is the bigger fellow, as I said before. That's mine. This is his. I have to admit, I do like the yellow. Uh, as I was saying, this is a pretty big seat post there. You can see it's it's very long, a bit old, and it's quite hard, like my one. Gosh, look at the tyres wearing away there. Um, it's not it's not the comfiest thing. I had to ride it around about the same time I was uh, putting a rack on my bike. Was the same time that I was riding this to Warzesh, which is about half an hour away. One of the rattliest half an hours of my life. I managed to break it even. The first time I did ride it, it was chucking it down, and I managed to puncture the tyre. He's he doesn't really take good care of it, and that's something that I want to to make a point of. Now my dad, he's a good dad. He likes his bikes. If I buy a rally, it's a thumbs up. If I buy a Pinnacle Sentinel. So hands down. And there's plenty of things he could teach me about bicycles. One thing I do want to know is how to how to change a tire. Check the inner tube to make sure that it it works properly. This bike here, this blue one, this is a giant Sydney. It's a town bike, like my green diploma here, but it's a bit more modern. A bit more kitted out. It's got these silly dynamo lights here, which uh, I never got to work. But more importantly, it's got these much chunkier tyres. Now, I rather fancy them, as well as the mudguards that come with it. I don't know if I'll get that rack on it. I'm not sure. But I'd rather like the tyres, well, the wheels and the mudguards. Only trouble is, I don't know if they'll fit. The chap, when he advertised them, said that these were... 800 cc wheels. Now, a typical bike has 700 cc, and looking at them, they look pretty similar anyway. I'll have to check the uh, the little numbers you can find on a tyre to make sure that they are 700. Otherwise, I wouldn't dare attempt it. But if you look at the forks on a bike, the forks are the two bits of metal that come down either side of the front wheel, and indeed at the back, although they're actually seat stays. We'll learn a bit more about that later. But if you take a look at this here, you'll notice, oh, can you see that? I'm not sure you can. Basically, there's a great deal of space here for much thicker tires, should you want to fit them. And that's another thing to look for when you're buying a bicycle. Because I rather fancy putting bigger tires on it. If this is gonna be a long distance commuter, then it's going to need a bigger saddle, which we've already got. And it's also going to need some bigger tyres, as well as a rack, some mud guards, and some lights. You're going to be following me on my journey to turning this Pinnacle Sentinel, the jewel of a man's life, which in some ways I've robbed him from. In his spirit, we're going to turn it into, well, the blue-orange Pinnacle. I'll see you next time.